Yo, what up, guys? It's Fabi here with a video to tell you five pieces of content that is not worth your time or resources in Raid Shadow Legends. This might be coming from an early game perspective or even an end game perspective. I will clarify when I'm talking about those. The first of all, I want to say that campaign gear farming for artifacts in the dungeons, spider, fire knight, all those content will always be worth it, whether you're early game or all the way to the late game. Clan boss is also crazy worth it, especially the Hydra when you get Roma, um, what's her name now? This other champion, Mitrala Life Bane, right? That will always be worth it. F um, the faction war will never be a waste of time. Whether you've gotten Lydia, you'll still be farming it on a daily basis. Let me just get those ones out of the way. They'll always be worth your time and energy that you spend in farming them. Now, let's head over to the boring ones, the, the ones that are not worth it and I've already showed you. The first one is this parrying pit because do not come over here. Even if you see me, I've maxed out, upgraded everything that you can see on the screen right here. I can tell you, it is not worth your time because if you wanted these champions to be 30, 60, whatever, you throw them to the campaign, you put bruise into them, you always have ways of doing champion training you always do champion training so there is no reason why they should be here in the first place why they are here is because i'm not even ready to farm masteries on them and i have nothing else to do i don't want my gems that i wasted here maxing all this to be a waste of time but it still is a waste of time because of the amount of low um xp you get for the amount of gems i spent here a lot of gems to up unlock all this and upgrade it so if you're thinking about it if you're new to raid do not spend on this why did i actually do it it's for a flex number one i wanted to flex on you guys and number two is because one time i had close to nine thousand or eight thousand gems that i had nothing else to do with so that's the only time that people should spend resources right here when you don't have nothing else in the game to spend resources on another place that i would direct your attention to is this sort of new feature that everybody is ignoring whether you're an end game player a whale a spender you do not come here to unbind champions because of the token that you spend on them or where you spend them actually had doesn't have anything great for you so if you're a newer player looking towards you got a legendary that you think is bad and you want to unbind him so that you can get these token points and exchange them for an, an actually worthy champion right here it's not worth it so even if I have four or five duplicates of a champion, I wouldn't spend it right here until they revamp this or make something new about it. I, they're ignoring this. They think maybe some people are actually spending on this. The champions need to rotate and it's been like this all this time and it's not worth you unbinding a duplicate champions. Let me see if I even have any. See, I do have a champion of a duplicate I can unbind. I have this one. Three copies of this champion. Three copies of this champion. It's telling me to unbind it. I would never unbind a champion that I even have five copies of in Raid Shadow Legends. The best, best place for you to spend that is on putting that champion into content like this. Let me look for one that I actually have. This is where I will actually spend it. So this is worth it than unbinding that champion. Even if it's just a few stats you get, it's totally worth it to use them as faction guardians than for you to unbind it. So that's one content that is not worth it. This unbinding of champions and token trader is another one that totally do not spend on it at all. That's my number two content that I have never and would never <laughs> take make use of in raid. And sparring pit is number one, but I wanted to give you guys as a lesson that even me that I've unlocked it to the highest level because I had gems at one point, it's still not worth it right now that I tell you. The next third point might be controversial but if i head over to these missions you know you got the arbiter and she is totally worth it because she unlocked the arena she had a lot of content whether pvp or pve she was she's still great today in raid but what about her counterpart for an end game player after you got the arbiter the next mission you're looking at this um, um sacred shard you're looking at these two legendary skill tomes yes yes but the main thing that some people try to push for is roman 2 drake's blood and I'll tell you right now, he's not worth it. The amount of stress you have to go through to get him. Now, if you're just doing your normal gameplay daily, you're not even focusing on what you're doing and you eventually push by mistake to get him, fine. But if it's something you focus on, oh, today I have to do this. Oh, do I have to spend, is it 30 or 20 um, glyphs on a champion? You do all that and just to get him and then finally put him in the vault. I think what made him less valuable in raid was the um, stone skin or was it the um, 
this um, ship meta. I don't know what made this champion less valuable in raid, but he's no longer like what he used to be in raid. That's what I know. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I can tell you right now he's in not my in my teams, not in my arena teams, not in my three v two teams, not in my um, live arena teams. Maybe because I've not built him right, but he is not worth all the effort and time I put into it. Two champions that I'll tell you: Sealed Drake, you waited for her; Abita, she you waited for her. Then um, what's her name? Lydia, the Dead Siren. Um, this other champion from the Hydra. Those other champions, those legendaries are crazy good. Even the ones, the legendaries you get from the Doom Tower, are, you spend less less effort in getting them. Who rust so cage you know those champions are totally worth it but you see this other Rom romantic drake's blood it's supposed to be a crazy good champion because of the amount of energy and resources you spend to get him but seems like it's no longer worth it because of the changes that have happened to the arena because yes it's an arena champion it probably could use for some pve wave content but not it's basically an arena champion like abita but abita found a lot of uses in a lot of other content even these days you don't see abita in high-end arena but she's still useful in some mid-level arena content so that's the number three content that i think is not worth your time in raid all right, the next one on number four is Doom Tower early game. Yes, for those players who are coming in first month, second month, even up to a year, you're playing raid, you're thinking, oh, Doom Tower launched today. I can't even beat stage one of the Boomer or normal. What are you doing in the in the Doom Tower? In the early game, what are you doing there? You don't you shouldn't be spending your resources right here in that early game. So for early game players, Doom Tower is not worth it. Don't build a uh, lady. What's her name now? Everybody is talking about this new legendary champion that can solo the boomer. This champion can solo the boomer. You left your clan boss team. You left your dragon team. You left your fire knight and spider team. Your cold at level 50. And you built a champion for the doom tower. What is wrong with you? So early game players should not be focusing on the doom tower. Focus on your dungeon team. Focus on your clan boss team. Then when you have that all sorted out, that's when you focus on doom tower or faction war teams, right? Those are when you start building flex champions who are not built for those specific content. But for end game team, end game players, Doom Tower is totally worth it because of all the secret, secret rooms. A lot of great champions you pick up from there and a lot of crazy gear you pick up you cannot get anywhere else. So that's a double-edged sword right here that the Doom Tower has. For early games, no. But for late game, yes. For early game, it can also be a good source of gems and i mean sorts of difficult uh, different resources it looks because it resets every frequently but trust me the amount of delay you put into your um into your champion training and artifact announcement and all that is is not what it in that early early game all right that's the that's also very controversial but i had to clarify that i'm talking about only early game players who have not yet built their clan boss team have not yet beat dungeon 20 dragon 20 you're not there yet you're coming to be the champion for um doom tower no don't do it now the last point is going to be the iron twins fortress and all this other new content that is coming out the iron twins is something i farm on a daily basis yes i'll say i farm it on a daily basis because i'm a content creator and i only farm this just so i can get these resources to do those videos but all the time i've been farming this altar of souls i mean i've been uh, summoning from this altar of souls i've gotten nothing noteworthy so that's why i say it's not worth it all this since the time this iron twins fortress came out i've been farming it at that highest level and maybe it's for spenders who want to spend and get these um amazing things but i have gotten nothing from it so you farm 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 open this you get nothing they've even added it to tournaments and all that stuff but it's not worth it because the amount of energy you spent in that iron twins fortress could have been used elsewhere and the amount of stats boost you get on this champion that you are waking for one star two star three star it's also not worth it spend those energy and else um, elsewhere get them masteries get them weapons get them that is guaranteed to give you some stats than this one that is going to give you a little bit of a quirky uh, advantage over your opponent. So, 2 star, 3 star, 2 star, 3 star. That's all you see here of, out of after all this time. So, it's better you don't do it. It's not worth it. I can say it. So, I don't buy this anymore. 
anyways that's these five things that i wanted to say is not what you spending your time and energy and resources on in raid shadow legends hopefully you got found this one excite insightful useful i guess and maybe if you disagree with me in any of these ones the sparring pit the unbinding and token trader the romantic drake's blood mission the doom tower early game and of course this iron trees fortress um let me know in the comments how why you disagree <laughs> with any of this one i'd love to learn up more about this from you guys but i've been spending my energy and resources on this ones and so far this is what i think about it so you guys can let me know i'm not even going to talk about this sand devil necropolis and this phantom Grove because i think it's kind of worth it for your start boot for the end game but for early game players and you can't even fight this boss that's why i didn't want to add it to the list but that boy i'm adding this one because there are some early game players who are actually farming this at level three level four daily trying to spend your six keys why you're not going to get anything from that author of souls. Let me tell you right now. All right. Let me end it right here. Happy Sunday to all of you. Like and subscribe for more daily Raid Shadow Legends content. And let me know what you think about this ones in the comment below. Later, guys.